G'day guys, Will here. So it is the moment of truth. We're about to do our final dry leak test here. So we've been sitting with some air pressure inside the loop for about 14 hours now. So we're gonna open up the valve again, exactly like we did in the previous video, except this time it's 14 hours worth of testing rather than a few seconds. So if we hear a little puff of air out of the tube, we know that it's held air pressure overnight and we're good to start filling. So let's test it out now. So we get the valve. That sounded good to me. <laughs> Hopefully you guys heard that as well. But um, yeah, I'm confident that we're good to start filling up with fluids. So let's get it filled up. Let's do our wet leak test. And then all being well, if there's no leaks, we'll be able to fire it up, make sure everything works and um, get windows installed. And then we can start to do some overclocking and stuff like that. So let's get to it. Okay, so I know a lot of the videos that you guys would have seen online show filling everything up in slow motion, you know, everything looks all beautiful and everything, and that's great, I love that stuff, but the reality is, I kinda wanna show you what it looks like in the real world. So, we want to have a lot of paper towels down in any of the areas where leakage could cause a problem, just in the initial stages while we check that there's no problems, and then once we've done that, we can take it all out and have a good look at everything. So I've got a little bit of protection up the top, around the edge of the graphics card and the uh, motherboard here where there could be leaks from here that could damage something. I've got it all chocked full here underneath the fittings on the CPU block, underneath the GPU here as well, so if anything drips down it won't go into any electronics. And then all around the underside of the pump here as well as protecting the um, white cables from the power supply as well, because obviously we don't want to get any dye on our beautiful new white cables and cause any damage there. So I think that should be enough. So now we're good to start filling. Okay, so we filled up enough that we can do our first pump turn on. So we're gonna switch on the pump here. What I've got it connected to is just an external 12 volt power supply, which is enough to just drive the pump. It's not gonna power anything else up because obviously we don't wanna have power running through all of our other components while we're um, leak testing. So what we'll do is we'll switch the pump on. It's gonna push the water down. As soon as the water level starts to get low, we'll switch it straight back off again and then refill the reservoir again. So the idea is it should start pumping up through and then, uh, yeah, we should see some air bubbles come through as well. Should push all the air out. Well, not seeing any leaks so far, so that's good. Obviously, the majority of that water then went into the radiator, so we wouldn't expect to see anything just yet. But, um, yeah, we're starting to see a little bit of water come out here. We're starting to see some splash back here as well. So let's continue filling. seeing any leakage which is the main thing so we're just gonna let that run we'll top up the reservoir again as it falls down but just checking that there's no dye on any of the paper towels or anything and it's good that we're using a colored dye here because any leaks we'll see very very quickly on any of the um, paper towels but everything looks good so far 
Might just tilt the case this way a bit as well just to help the fluid come through. So we've got a bit of a foam build up there. That's just the um, that's just the air coming through the system and creating those bubbles. That'll die down over time, but we will fill it up a little bit more while it's still running here and um, continue to keep an eye on it for leaks. So we've been running for about half an hour now and no issues whatsoever to speak of. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out all of my protection here. Check that absolutely nothing's got even a skerrick of dye on it. Everything looks absolutely fine. Nothing whatsoever. So we definitely don't have any major leaks. That is for absolute certain. So basically what we wanna do from here is just keep an eye on the coolant level here, see if it drops. Now it is gonna drop a little bit. I've seen people flip out when they see the coolant level drops and like, oh, I've got a leak. Um, there is still quite a lot of air in the system. You, see, you can see it in the graphics card there. There's a little pocket at the top of the CPU water block as well, but there's still a lot of air inside the radiators that will sort of work its way out over the course of the next week. So as that air comes out, it obviously will be replaced by the coolant. So we'll see that level drop a little bit. So I've plugged up the top now. We'll let that bleed over time and just sort of replace itself with air. We'll release the cap periodically just to let any pressure out. And um, yeah, I'll leave it for probably another hour and then I think we're probably safe to do our first boot. Okay guys, so it is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Time to power this guy up for the first time. So. A couple of things that we need to be aware of. We are going to get some errors in the main BIOS screen, the loading screen initially, and that is fine. Uh, normally you get things like fan errors, CPU configurations and stuff like that. You need to go into the BIOS and configure stuff. Uh, we're also going to have absolute LED RGB chaos inside the case as well. Everything's going to be flashing crazy colors, I would imagine. Uh, RGB, the um, aura sync for the uh, motherboard, sort of just goes into like a demo mode on the first boot, if I remember correctly, from the last time. I did one of these builds. So um, yeah, we're expecting to see a bit of a chaotic sort of light show inside. But other than that, hopefully everything will work. So let's flick the power on. No sparks. <laughs> and we'll push the button on the front here. <laughs> All right, what have we got? Everything looks like it's lighting up. We've got flow through our water pump, which is good. You can see it all churning around and hopefully we get some display on the screen in a moment too. So, oh yeah, it's doing its memory training. So that's normal. It's, um, it always freaks people out the first time, but the motherboard sort of switches itself off and then comes back on again. That's just memory training. What it's doing is it's tightening in the, um, the memory timings to make sure that it's nice and stable. So this time around, we should hopefully get something on the screen. There we go. Yes, <laughs> I was starting to worry there. It was taking way too long. All right, so let's have a look. Okay, so we've got F1 to enter setup. We've got our 32 gigs of RAM being detected. Our 9900K obviously has been detected. We wouldn't have got this far if it wasn't. Uh, it's also seeing our M2 Samsung 970 Pro one terabyte drive there as well. So what I like to do first of all is go into the setup. It's not detecting my keyboard, so we'll try and fix that. <laughs> There we go. I think that's correct now. Yep, now it's detecting the keyboard. Hopefully that's our one glitch for the mission. <laughs> All right, let's see what we've got here. Okay, so the first thing I like to see, as I was saying, is the CPU temperature. I just like to keep an eye on that. Even though we're at default clock speeds here, we can see it's at 30, 29, 30 degrees odd Celsius for our idle temperature. So I like to just sort of keep an eye on that for a moment. And then we want to go across to our monitor here and we want to disable or ignore all the ones that we're not getting signal from. So we'll do that quickly now. So with that done now, we should be good to begin installing Windows. So you see it's still hovering around 28, 29 degrees idle, which is good. That's at 1.066 V core. So it looks like everything's fine. Uh, all the lights are working, all the fans are lit up. I think I can see all the fans in the front are lit up as well. Uh, it's starting to bleed some air out of the system now as well. You can see that reservoir started to drain down. I had it running leak testing for about an hour before I powered it all up. But anyway, let's get Windows installing and check that everything works properly once it's all booted up.
So Windows is all up and running. I had a few problems installing Windows actually. I kept on getting the system lock up on the loading screen of Windows. And what I figured out it was in the end was the automatic settings for the motherboard for the CPU and everything were just not stable at all. It was running really low voltage. I think it was trying to run something like 4.6 gigahertz at like one volt flat or something. And as soon as there was any CPU load at all, it just locked up immediately. It took me a little while to sort of figure out what was going on there. But uh, I just did a very quick and dirty overclock to 4.8 gigahertz on all cores at 1.3 volts, which was what I thought would be you know easily achievable. And we've got OCCT running here quickly now. You can see no errors detected, been running for three minutes here. Our temperatures are sitting at around about 60 degrees on the CPU, which I'm happy with. And uh, yeah, everything looks to be perfectly fine. That's at 4.8 gigahertz at 1.3 volts, but 1.27, 1.28 volts with VDroop there. So anyway, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to get all the drivers and everything installed, hook it up to the network, get my antivirus and everything set up on it and uh, then we can get stuck into doing some overclocking guys so yeah really happy that everything's working obviously but uh, i really hope that you guys have found the hardware side of these videos interesting and beneficial hopefully you guys have learned a lot and of course as i've said in the earlier videos if you do have any questions whatsoever let me know in the comments i'm happy to come back and do some more videos covering in more detail and um, obviously I'll try to reply to as many of your comments as well. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed everything will work out perfectly. So guys, thank you very much for watching the hardware section of this video series. Obviously we're gonna be moving on towards more software and overclocking stuff from now on in the little video series. So hopefully you guys will find that interesting as well. So stick around for that. But as I've mentioned in previous videos, if you are interested in purchasing any of the gear that you see in this build, you can do so using the affiliate links in the description below. A small percentage from all of those sales goes back to me to help out with this channel. And that is what has made things like this possible in the first place. So I really do appreciate your support there. But of course the best support is always to watch the videos, share them with your mates, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as well. And of course the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. But I'm going to get stuck into this thing now, get everything installed. So I'll see you guys again in the next video. Bye.